William Ryan, otherwise known as Bill. Um, uh, Ryan Consulting, LLC, 2015 uh, is when I started. Uh, I title myself founder and principal consultant, but uh, down here in Louisville, Kentucky. Excellent, excellent. I spent some time in uh, in the Lexington area for for a few stints uh, doing some projects. I love uh, love Kentucky. It's yeah. We came down here in two thousand and four. It was uh, it was our intent to be here five years, and I think we're on version four of our plan right now. I went down. Um, we went for a. Uh, we were shooting a, a, a documentary on this gentleman that was down there. In in actually no, he was in Louisville. Um, and uh, and we were at Lou and we shot it on his porch and he lives in obviously all the equestrian farms and everything like that and it was just this beautiful porch and uh, I just I can't even I'm taking myself back to the to the visual there that how majestic that that area is yeah yeah we had we had moved uh, uh, down here and and uh, I think some of the shocks that that continue to resonate was that uh, I mean this is a foodie town. And I, I, I hate to, you know, this is a stereotype, but, you know, I wasn't expecting to come to Kentucky and be blown away by the culinary community. Um, I found out we have a, a culinary school here, which helps. Um, but, you know, add the, add the bourbon that started, you know, its trails here in Louisville and, and a growing microbrewery industry in this state, in the Commonwealth, uh, and then some great food and, and, and then the entertainment just does, it has continued to grow in this area. So it's been a delight to live here. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, when it came down to the nighttime and stuff like that, during the day we, we recorded with him and we bounced back and forth. Uh, but the nightlife was really fun as well. And it was just how live music, it reminded me of like a lot of times people, uh, people talk about Nashville and I've been there a lot of times and I love Nashville, but it really felt like a little Nashville, you know, and I think in, in uh, Lexington as well, uh, we were in this area that had like an outdoor um, set up that like every Thursday and Friday they had live music. And it was, I don't know, I did long story short is that I, if anybody's never been to Kentucky, uh, what I'm trying to, yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. I can tell, I can tell you one thing that my own, my fun, most fun or my funniest uh, story of some is uh, when it comes to contracts. Not many people have contract stories that are funny, but I actually uh, was with the gentleman uh, in, in uh, Lexington Brewing Company, which is also Alltech, um, which is one of the biggest companies there. The owner of uh, Alltech, who has since passed away, one of the nicest men in the world. And I wanted to, I was working with a distributor at the time in Pennsylvania. We wanted to carry their beer. And, um, and he basically, we went through the whole day of the dog and pony show. We went from the morning all the way through in the evening. And it was probably midnight or so, and there, somebody took a photo. So I have this photo, and uh, we're we're many bourbons in, and uh, and he goes, he goes, you know what? He's like, you seem like a stand up guy. He's like, let's just let's just do this down to an arm wrestling contest. Now he's about eighty some years old at the time, and I'm I'm in my late twenties. I'm six three, three hundred, and he's he's a, he's a he's where he is. So we had we did the arm wrestling in the middle of I can't remember which bar it was. So uh, ultimately, I won and, and got the distribution contract and turned into a really awesome um, experience with him. But uh, one thing I met when I was down, there was a lot of people that uh, really are just genuine. And really, it's uh, it's a different type of uh, culture. It's the culture that you actually, both the good and the bad, seems like you know where you stand with people. And I love it. And, and that's one of the things that brings a comfort to the social aspect of uh, interacting with people and meeting people. And um, so that that Kentucky, I cannot speak highly enough that anybody has not been down there. And I, I know I'm not being uh, sponsored by the Tourism Bureau of Kentucky. So <laughs> yeah. Bill, we'll focus, on, we'll focus on you for a sec. Hey, so uh, your, your career, you, you, you spanned over different industries and lots of different roles. The consistent focus seems like, you know, aligning purpose, people, process, can you talk about any pivotal moments or any specific project as a starting point that kind of defined your approach with consulting? You know, for me, it's always been, you know, that's kind of the key thing. You, you know, you've got to align people to that shared purpose. And, and, if, and if you can get their passion, then you'll engage them. You'll get the best out of them. You know, so it's been kind of a throughout my career. I, I, those are the things that have always bubbled up. and. Um, and, I, and, and you were mentioning, uh, you know, in a consulting process, um, it, one of the things that's that's uh, helped me be uh, in business since 2015 is uh, I've been very fortunate to create partnerships and uh, with different you know, groups and different uh, small businesses and, and like-minded owners. Um, and this was a, a partnership 
project uh, that um, I was brought in with this partner to uh, help a financial investment firm. And they wanted to start a, a leadership development program. And their point was that, you know, they needed to have a, a pipeline of, of leaders. They needed to have kind of a strong pipeline. They wanted to have a, lot, a pipeline that was going to continue to drive their organization forward. So it was really kind of, you know, coming back down and 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 getting a, a, um, a very diverse across that organization team of, of individuals to you know bring in the, the shared values bring in their view of leadership principles and and kind of like foster that engagement get their buy-in kind of thing and then we looked at the processes that they were going to you know kind of standardize this is you know that they would you know agree that these are the valuable things to to create and craft so that the new leaders coming in would embody them embrace them encourage them and use them and and that was like you know those core competencies both you know technical skills the business behaviors um, create kind of a, a learning pathway so that you know no matter what part of the business you were coming from that you kind of created that shared alignment of purpose and then kind of um, building on that to create networks and that you know people could grow and work you know in the flow of work so you know all of those things brought people together you know we had we had core processes of, of content and learning pathways. We had people that were together, you know, agreeing on a shared purpose. And and in that, you know, we were you know, able to kind of ignite because of those building of networks and connections, the passion that they had and and kind of create that, you know, success that that led them to have a very successful program um, that, you know, let us partner with with their business with us and, and create kind of a successful solution. And, and your experience as well, like just for, for your business specifically, you have various awards and things like that that you've won. Speak about anything recently and kind of how that's affected your future of how you look at different projects and such. I was uh, a part, again, with one of my partners. Uh, we were part of a, of a project um, that uh, was able to uh, achieve a Brandon Hall Group uh, gold in 2023. And, and, and uh, I think the thing that made it so powerful for us was when we were brought in to this uh, uh, client, it was one of those conversations where the leadership had said, we're going to use learning as a way to retain and engage our employees. Um, they were a nonprofit, high tech, um, but they wanted to, uh, and they were losing some of their people because, you know, they were nonprofit. Um, and, and, and the funny part was, was that the conversation kind of came around going, you know, these are technical people. They want badges and certificates and all this other stuff. And, and, and they welcomed the, the, the conversation that, that I prompted by saying, have you asked them? And <laughs> that ability to stop and go, well, we think we know. And they did. They had a really good feeling. But they said, hey, let's go talk to them. And and I got to go on this journey of of exploration of discovery, and that's uh, uh, if you want to type you know um, hit, hit a, a, a string within me that resonates. Oh my goodness, that was it! I got to talk to you know from the hourlies to the senior levels um, across the organization in all the lines of business, have conversations, and and, and in essence, go what jazzes you. What stops you from being jazzed? What would it? What would you want to learn? And the thing that got me most was they wanted to communicate better. They wanted to understand what their coworkers did so that they could make processes upstream and downstream of them better, more efficient. They wanted to know how to be a leader, and they wanted to know how to lead well, you know, with passion and 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 not to be a project manager, but to lead people. And 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 they wanted to understand other parts of the business. They wanted that inter-organizational kind of, uh, of capability to understand, have, an, have an understanding, not to just be stuck in their little box. And it was so powerful. You know, they came back and they were like so, because they were already, they had chosen to be in this nonprofit. They were already aligned to purpose. So it was, it was that capability. And we created a, a strategic plan that, that took all of their ideas and all of their desires and crafted them into a, you know, um, Kind of a, a three-step process, but you know, step one was you know, like let's set the table, let's understand how we communicate, how we work together, how we you know, let's cross hands with it, you know, let's share cookies, you know, all those kind of things that we had those silly books about. They put into practice, and and this this plan ended up winning a gold with Brandon Hall. It was just very, as you can tell, it still just resonates with me. It was an incredibly powerful experience.
Well, it it resonates with me as well, and that's one of the reasons I brought it up. Is is when I saw that on your on your profile on LinkedIn, I, I it struck me because like that's what this whole podcast is about in a different sense. It's about being authentic and being genuine, and that's why there's no prep, there's no questions, there's no anything. It's like hit record, and it's two human beings connecting in real time on camera with no agenda, no script, no guidelines, and nobody else in the room. I am a team of one. I have nobody influencing. I have nobody influencing what I'm saying. I have nobody influencing anything like that. I bring project managers and I bring people in for projects, like exactly like you do. Um, strategic partners are are people I work with daily, and I love working with them for the same reason it sounds like you're saying. Because also on top of that, there's no there's no bell curve. There's no learning curve. It's like it's turnkey. Everybody comes in. It's one meeting. Here's the objective. Everybody's seasoned. Everybody knows what's to do. There's no training. It's like it's just execute. And uh, with that said, the underlying theme of your project and what you are doing, it, it's such an it's such a showcase of what our brains and what our society was doing prior to COVID. We were manufacturing authenticity and we were manufacturing human connection. Whether it was some cheesy, you know, uh, cake at lunch for everybody in the break room, or all these different things that we do, and I'm not discrediting the attempts. The intention is good with these activities. But there is definitely a realization that we're coming to, and especially my anecdotally, I have 100 interviews this year scheduled and more booking every every day. The common theme is post pandemic, post everything else, us settling into this new society, human connection is the number one desire that I'm hearing from employees for their personal life to the, the management. And talk, a, uh, I guess, a little bit about how that evolution from your perspective does change because we have to admit that we and i was a vice president of a big company that did the same thing we manufactured authenticity and genuineness talk about moving forward with the veil being pulled back so to speak how did that change your process moving forward i hate to say this it didn't but so the focus of my career has always been about um, expanding access through technology. So I, I have been involved in creating solutions and with a goal of, of being making them available anywhere, anytime to a person at that point of need. So that's always been my focus. I, I was involved in computer-based training. I've done video discs. Somebody can go look it up. I'm sure most people haven't even, don't even remember those anymore. You know, I was working on learning management systems in the early 1990s. So all of this to say um, that when the pandemic hit, I was already working in this remote mindset. My, my, my wife has a line that she teased me with. She said, I threw a party and people finally came. <laughs> For your record, I, was, I, I also was in it prior. And I don't, I, I mean, I need to, I need to commiserate with you because I tell people, I said, I was doing remote learning and remote work before it was cool. Like I got, I got college credits doing it remotely with the, when, when back when that technology was horrible. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, just for a side note, since we're at a bar talking, um, when I first went into business, the first uh, piece of uh, software that I invested in was Zoom. So 2015. And at that time, my twins were about two or 12. And and so I, I came home and I wanted to learn this particular tool. I didn't know it well. I'd used it, but I didn't know it from, you know, the authoring perspective, if you will, the, the hosting perspective. So I had my, my twins in, in various parts of our house, you know, one on an iPad and one on, an, on a MacBook and, you know, you know, one on, I don't know. Two or three things, and and we learned how to use the whiteboard and share, you know, presentation facilitator skills, blah, back and forth. It's fast forward, you know. Now they're they're finishing their senior year of high school at home, so they graduated. They're COVID graduates, and and uh, and and I'm home, and and uh, you know, I've got one one is upstairs, one is taking over the dining room, and I come upstairs and I hear the one in the dining room helping her teacher on Zoom because she doesn't know how to use it. And I'm thinking, oh, have I jinxed my poor children? But you know, they they understood, you know. And and the whole issue is is how do you use the tools? How do you maximize it? Um, but the core comes back down to is how do you engage? So so your question now that we're coming full circle, I, I took you, I took us on a long way. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. You know, I think the the question that really came was was raised was 
you know, how do we continue to create community? How do we create connections? And and I think one of the things that businesses they had the right idea. You're right. The the brown bag lunches, all the kind of stuff. They had the right idea. They, but the technology can be viewed as a barrier. But I view it as you have to be intentional. And so I've created networks, and and I've joined networks that are uh, global. I, I have a, a monthly coffee with people that are located in South America, uh, Asia. Europe and I'm having coffee some of them are getting up in the middle of the night a couple of them are having cocktails you know it, it the point is is that we come together we have a shared interest we are back to shared purpose you know we're both we're all in the learning space in some way shape or form and and we trade notes um, I joined professional societies and stayed active in them and 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 the idea is that as a leader you know the core is to be intentional in how we communicate and be intentional about how we connect. And when I led teams, I, I was, uh, in fact, the reason that, that brought me down to Louisville was, was a team that was gonna be, or an organization, that was going to be uh, growing by outsourcing some of its work overseas. So I had teams that were already in overseas environments and all across the country. So I used to keep little three by five cards so I wouldn't forget, you know, key things about people's name and their family and some of that stuff, and you know, as I got it. But but you know the point was was like you know we were using instant messaging and we were we had early video you know capabilities, um, it was you know fifteen frames you know half half speed at the time but it, you know this is early two thousands, but you know it was getting better, and and I intentionally would make coffee schedules to talk to people across the way you know if I I certainly traveled of course we all traveled then, but you know in the middle of it I didn't not talk to them or or have a connection. Because I still think having that connection, you have to be intentional and you have to foster that with a compassionate view of who that person is before you even have to worry about career and criteria and performance. We have to like create this community and that lets us feel that trust and lets us engage to create over distance, over space, over time, the things that we want to do that move us forward professionally. I think that your point, your point about the uh, the technology being a barrier is really important, and I look at it in two ways. I also flip the lens a little bit and look at technology as a uh, inhibitor of productivity, and that productivity not in a work sense, but in a connection sense. Um, yes, driving around and shaking hands every day, I did it. I was Willie Loman for so long, and still am sometimes to this day. You know, going in and uh, knocking down doors and shaking hands and kissing babies, and sometimes the opposite. You know, it depends on how the day was. But you know, with that said, you know there is a uh, there is a there is a there is a factor of the handshake, and there is there is a, a a piece of that that is nostalgic and romantic. But there's also a power in for me. And I, starting in 2017, what I was pitching to everybody was how remote work can ex exceed your unlimited like product. Excuse me, the unlimited possibilities of productivity that can be found with remote working. When it's mm -hmm. done in a very balanced approach, like you said, not I'm not advocating, and I've done it at various times during COVID and other things, isolating and doing all that stuff, and and that's not good. That's not healthy. Um, balancing outward social interactions along with it allows you to sales, for example. You know, I uh, you're driving around in a car with a windshield time. If you're not in a you know city, you know you might hit uh, 15 to 20 stops a day. You know, you're like pulling doors and meeting people and shaking hands. If I'm at home and I'm on the I'm on this doing this right now, I could do 100 to 200 contacts a day. If I'm a sales rep that's on commission, or I'm a sales rep that's doing anything like that, what am I going to do? I'm going to go and I'm going to be connected with people often. And that's the difference is, I think there's the skill and the art is the operator as opposed mm -hmm. to the technology. And mm -hmm. the technology is only a barrier if the operator doesn't know how to effectively use the technology. So I'm back down to the idea. It's 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 intention, and yeah. from a from a learning perspective, I'll say design matters. You know, you 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 design for the engagement, and and you realize the technology may put a barrier in place, but it also has ways to um, support efforts of design, and that comes back down to intentionally doing it. You know, I mean, some people like I, I've had recent clients who are saying, you know, I want to, you know, or they're telling me I need an eight hour class in person. And I'm back to the point going, why does it have to be eight hours? 
And what do you really want people to be able to do? Let's talk about performance. Let's stop talking about attendance. And mm -hmm. let's let's be let's be focused on what do what what is success for these people? What does it look like? How do you measure it so that you know if they were successful? And then let's see what they got before you start worrying about I need an eight-hour class because that's what we always did. Hey, just because we did it doesn't mean it was right or good. And it comes for me, it comes back down to let's be intentional about what we're trying to do. And then figure out the best way to handle it. Now, some of it may be in, in in person. May some of it may just need to be synchronous. You know, let's bring people together to solve a problem. And and if they're separated over time and space, then let's do it. You know, online. But let's still bring them together with a purpose. I don't want to. You know, a, a, a talking head is a talking head, whether it's sitting in front of a classroom or on this. You know, media. So bad. And that's and that, I mean that's you're exactly right. And that's the talking head piece is what we've all been distracted by everywhere. It's the guy that gets hired to talk and, and talk and talk and and that's all there is. And when that when they get bored of that guy, they just find another guy to talk and talk and talk. And it's one of those things where it doesn't really matter. And there's nothing really to it. There's no substance. And there's, like you said, there's no intent. And with that said, I wanna uh, I wanna back and shift over to uh, recreational and athletics. And I wanna <laughs> talk about I wanna talk about sailing. And I want to say that, like, I was a wrestler, football player, rugby guy, and I never, I grew up in, uh, I was born in Philadelphia, but then moved away, lived in West Virginia for a long time, and then came back to Philadelphia when I was at Drexel University. And at Drexel, uh, the crew team there was badass. And uh, and those guys, those guys, they had the Borgata there and all this stuff. And, and um, you know, not crew I know is nothing but sailing. All right. And I'm not trying to compare the two. and That's not where I'm going with. I'm going with the fact of like sports that are in a controlled environment have no no place comparing themselves to sports that are uh, have the elements of Mother Nature to work with. <laughs> and I want I want to compliment you because I'm also I'm a kayaker and things like that. And I and I um I want to talk a little bit about how do you take your experiences with sailing. I know it, it, and then directly related to what you do on a daily basis, and whether that be, it sounds, it, it seems like you're also with being a solopreneur as well. That sailing and solopreneurship, and it's all on you, or and that it sounds like that's that's uh, very much in your hobby as well. Well, uh, I, it's been one. I, I grew up. I didn't grow up sailing. I learned how to sail as a teenager. And uh, and uh, I'm I'm very very blessed right now. I have a 28 foot uh, long sailboat, and and we race it. Um, uh, there's there takes five of us usually to to race this boat. It, it comes with a spinnaker. That's that kind of like uh, looks like a balloon type sail up that's in the front of the boat. Sometimes you'll see it's very colorful usually. So, um, but it has its own set of, of, of skills that, that's necessary. And, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I'm at the back, you know, with a stick in my hand steering, but you know, it, you know, in, in like a solopreneur, yeah, I'm back here, you know, as a steering, but the really effective things have, I've, I, I, I mentioned earlier are strategic partners. You know, those are the people that, you know, I can't do this, but they can. Or, or, or they need something that I can bring to the table, and 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 when we work together, you know, aligned where we're going, you know, the the solution ends up being a gold medal winner. So, as an example, and on a sailboat, it's the same kind of thing I found out through the years. You know, it it is it's it's that that kind of seamlessness or synthesis, if you will, of of the tools, and but teamwork, and and then executing. You know, plan the work, work the plan, and 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 that's the same whether you're on a boat or or whether you're you're um, you know, sitting there on on you know in a in a team you know working with a client, um, you know, part of it on the boat is is you know everybody has to everybody knows what their role is, so it's clear roles and responsibilities. Um, we all have a shared purpose. You know, we know where we're going. You know, it's up to to the person in the back. You know, the the skipper uh, to identify what you know our vision is. And and how, how what our plan is and how we're going to get there, but what you know also saying and, and your part will be this part and this part and this part, and and but once we're out there, you know it's it's a it's the communication, and it's the 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 collective trust 
uh, we have in each other because you know sometimes it's it's a bad tactical decision sometimes it's a need to discuss what sail trim is so we have better speed or different kinds of speed for the the space we're in at that time it's we're back to aligning people to purpose and it's like you know business objectives and metrics you know it's the same kind of of you know back to you know back to back to have that kind of execution be the same across uh, the sport as well as as the business so you know a lot of its training you know we got to make sure that everybody has knows what their role is you know the re responsibilities are clear their, their metrics of success are clear um, they have to choreograph you know especially when you're changing direction or you're raising and lowering sales it's a dance <laughs> if you don't do it in the in the it, when it when it all works it's beautiful and when somebody doesn't do something or it's out of sequence it's really not beautiful <laughs> and and you know and that's the same thing when you're working with a team if you're like in a manufacturing space um you know trying to create you know what goes on and how how you you're creating that kind of process map you know if, and people make it like i did some work with a steel manufacturer recently and and when when the when the process goes through it's like oh this you know massive you know molten metal suddenly becomes this shaped thing and it's like and then when it doesn't it's an ugly mess and you know <laughs> you know sailing about you know we've had some ugly messes so you know in both of those spaces you know, back down to a commitment to you know coaching each other um having a growth mindset being willing to you know admit hey we blew that tack let's not look backwards there's another tack coming forward how do we how do we analyze our performance get real-time feedback to each other iterate 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 and then dedicate just to you know continually improving our performance together and uh, you know to me that that's the same kind of stuff that we do in the workplace it's in kind of the, the strategies i bring to my clients you know it's it's the same kind of, of model of making sure that we all can see success and we all can define it and we all can measure it and we're all about bringing it together and then making that kind of seamless technology people process you know one high performing team as the result and that's you know it's the same it's the same on the boat as it is in work the only difference on the boat is at the end of the race we do bring a cooler on board and <laughs> i haven't found that at the workplace but uh you know someday <laughs> i love the uh, that analogy there and we used to have a uh, in kayaking especially in uh, whitewater rafting or whitewater rafting whitewater kayaking and stuff like that it was always there's always another rock and it's always yeah. when you see that when you see the glimpse of it, it's kind of like the iceberg out on the ocean. You know what I mean? There's always a piece of it. There's more to it. And so if you think you're going to dodge it, you know what I mean? That's it's really knowing that as opposed and also not getting like you said, not getting stuck on the one you just hit because sure as shit, there's another one coming another couple of feet. And it's the same thing in life. Talking about simplification and intent and focus. Talk about so strategy on a page. You know, uh, to me, I, I wish I could remember when. I, I learned about that and it's been so long it's been a part of my lexicon and my in in the places i worked at going back into the 90s i had to learn it someplace back then i wish i could i could go back and figure out where or pinpoint that because i have brought that out and and it's been so powerful to create a strategy on a page a soap um you know it's it's that one page statement if that was not a statement one page uh description of of the plan when when so like a lot of times you know i work uh i'll, I'll put both hats on for a minute you know in my role as is as, as a as a learning officer in in a, a leader of of learning at a couple of different organizations in that kind of you know c role and in my c role as a consultant working with with organizations creating these kind of strategies people will come up and say you know what's a strategy and 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 the key is is that they're asking kind of those two levels of questions you know the first is is what's the business strategy and then the second question is is and what's your strategy and and when I'm, you know and are they the same or at least are they in support of each other and so you know a lot of that is is i'll go back to that um, brandon hall winter project where it was it was listening you go in and you talk to people and you ask them you know you ask them why i'm i'm a big fan of you know why um i consider myself the advocate for the learner because i don't, I don't know what they got to do they do and if i ask them how and why they'll tell me 
And if I can figure out ways to make it better, safer, faster, easier, that's I've done my job. And and so culling all that information comes usually down to some core values. It could be behavioral aspects. It could be environmental. It could be just ergonomics. It, and it could be te uh, technical and training. But creating those points where it's like, we're going to address these. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have to be five, but, you know, for this example. And then a little bit below that to say, you know, here's how we're going to address this one. Step one, two, three, four. And, and, and we're going to do it in the next 12 months. And here's what we expect. And there you go. And it, it helps have that message, especially when you're trying to work with business leaders. And I think that's the, the key about the value of a SOAP. It's not for the learning people. It's for the business. It helps communicate the impact and the plan to support the operational and performance of the people in the business, in the terms of that business. I don't put in L and D jargon. Nobody cares. <laughs> we 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 know what we're gonna do, but we want to make sure we're telling our people we commit to helping your teams be safer, faster, better, more efficient, more effective, and we're gonna do it this way because it's about it's all about them. I and that's the, yep. no, you're good. No, you're good. no, no, and that's 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 the essence of a soap. Yeah, so so with with the with the soap method, I I didn't. It was I'm going to call it the soap method, and and one of the things that yeah, and the reason I'm getting that is I I was do I always did something separately, but it stemmed off of um off of a, a resume teacher one day. So one day there was a resume teacher in a class that that basically was like, don't you ever? And this is years ago, so anybody anybody that's in the resume writing, and I'm about to have somebody on in a couple of weeks as well, so I apologize in advance, but this is in the late '90s, early 2000s, was. Don't put anything on uh, past one page and only fit it on one page. And that process, now I'm, this is, everybody else in my class uh, had no problem with that. I remember that. Now me, I was involved with every extracurricular activity in the world, every sports event. I had every, I was a painter. I was a Renaissance man. I was uh, all these things. And I thought to myself, man, how do I put all this in one page? And I couldn't. And that process stuck with me because it was really stressful because she was very serious too. And she's like, well, these, all these things can't be important for you and to define you. And I'm like, but they are. And she's like, well, that's not physically possible. Now our brains are different. And we thought we look at people more to, as, as an opportunity and not so two dimensional like she was. And I'm not going to name any names, but, um, but, but unintentionally, I know this was not her intent, uh, but over time that situation and that, and that logic stayed with me to the point that it came through with every idea of mine. So what I then was able to do was every crazy idea that I come up with, and I've had many moments with post-it notes all over the walls and the yarn in between with the thumbtacks. And during those moments, I don't ever pursue anything until it can fit into one page. And all the other ideas are important, but the foundation is what is gets distilled down into the one page. And all the other pages are ancillary and they're not really as important to the core one page. So when I saw that and I saw that in your history and your experience, I just wanted to let you know that like that needs to be that needs to be more prevalent in every business because you and I both know despite we could be at any stage in our lives, we could be a billionaire, we could be a, a hundred mil or a, hundred, a thousandaire. And at the same time, you sat through those meetings and wasted time in your life in a meeting or a presentation or all of these things and that meme that goes around where it's like this could have been an email there it's it's funny but it's and i, I laugh about it but when you look back and you really look at life at post pandemic and be like all oh, that time was was so wasted and and two reasons one as a business owner it could have been wasted on productivity we could have been more productive if we weren't sitting in so many meetings and three we're sitting here arguing and i'm not saying pro or against but we're arguing over 32 hours versus 40 hours how about we not focus like you're saying about the hours and let's just focus on what the job is. And if the job only takes 32 hours to do, then that's all it is. And if the job takes 50 hours to do, then that's what it is. And why aren't, why can't we just, and we, I'm speaking as consultant to a consultant because I look at myself like that. I took the lens off. I used to be a consultant the, and thought about it like a lawyer where it was every hour was docked at everything. And I had a friend of mine, Bobby Gillespie, that taught me what selling on value versus pricing. And he taught me that it changed my whole world. Now, what I find ironic is the consultants do it now, 
but the businesses don't do it now. And now I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak uh, about some businesses that I do know personally, like that do sell on value. Imagine a world, and I'm going to get off the soapbox here in a second. Imagine a world if we sold on value as opposed to price from a core statement in the beginning. And that value to be everything, valuing everything, time, money, resources, and actually intentionally looked at every position in our company and said, not, oh, here's 40 hours, slap it on and move on. Actually look at everything and say, what does this job really need? And not, I'm not trying to cut hours. Please don't. I mean, people will take this out of context. And I know that is not me looking to cut somebody that has 40 hours a week. What it is, is making you realize is a, a, if you were working 32 hours a week and that's that's sufficient and the company needs you at 40, we can realize what other things need to happen. And I'm not. Yeah. So I'm not talking about. And again, out of context, and I'm going to get off the soapbox, I promise, Bill. But I'm not talking about a Bezos type thing where we start inserting a thousand things, but there are different things or it's just the person could be asked and say, listen, here's the job. The job's 32 hours. Uh, do you want to we, we have projects so we could fill the rest of the eight hours with every week that you could do for us that would be helpful or you can just have a 32 hour week job. And what a what a valuable thing where the employee can choose something, but also the company can save and everybody's focus is on what that drives them and and you know you talk about meaningful work so think about the last four years five years you know we've had constant reminders about what what that has meant to many people from time and family to loss to um a recognition of of what we actually invest in and are we investing in the right things at the right time for the right amount of time so one of the the questions that that i have had to face in my consulting space is how do we help people have meaning in their work so back down to that shared purpose and i love your idea of it's 32 hours it's 32 hours so what would what does the business need that this person may actually be able to help them with because one area that that i um, grapple with in my consulting space is that people we look at people as the box we put them in and we don't allow the fact that a lot of people come into jobs with other skills that nobody knows about and and may actually have a capability that we could tap into to help the organization um, I was uh, when I led teams I was very strong about saying tell me more about a what you did before you came here and what you like to do outside of here and and I actually had people on my on my teams at various points who um, were graphic people, were artists, loved to, and and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, I know you're designing curriculum, I know you've got a master's in that, but if you do this too, you know, our multimedia team back then could use some help. Would you could, would you like to do some of that? And you know, it's like, oh, tap into this, sure. Meaningful work has a point, and and in that it has value to the person, which then kind of brings that value back to the organization, which helps them stay. So we talk about our retention, we talk about engagement, and for me, it's about being intentional and having a conversation in that community and doing it with compassion. I, um, when I worked at, uh, at a Wrigley Beverage in Philadelphia, it's uh, one of the larger whole beer wholesalers in the country. Um, I worked directly with the owner at different times, Dominic and a bunch of other people. And what they quickly, I was in college at Drexel at the time. So what worked, what worked for that was my schedule was not sporadic or my schedule was sporadic. So they, I, they couldn't put me in a square peg round hole scenario. So they had to actually customize everything. What ended up coming out of that was the most magical journey in the world. And I mean that from, and I, I say that so crazy as, as, as like being like uh, in the back of the warehouse one day, fixing broken cases of beer into, for 12 hours overnight to the next day um, at a Miller Coors convention and I'm taking notes for someone that couldn't be there. And then the next day I'm in Palm Beach because I'm supposed to take a, a car from Palm Beach to Philadelphia. So I, I'm flying to Palm Beach to drive a car back up. And it's like, and it is like that every day and every week. And it was, it was always something different. There was a show uh, called Entourage on HBO, and it was uh, it was it was Turtle as the character that a lot of people would know, and he was just the gopher that would go run everything and all this stuff. And that's what I did, and I did it. I did it right out of high school, and and um, and I did it for years. And a lot of my friends were always like, 
oh man, don't you feel like such a, you know, like it was the ego thing. And I didn't have an ego about it because I was like, no, actually, to be honest with you, it's really fun on the weekends. I go to the airport, I pick up random people. And here's where it's kind of funny. Like I look at this podcast now, and this is actually in the moment re me realizing this. I kind of had to do this back then because I never knew who I was picking up. I was just told like to go to the airport and like sit at this place and this person would come. And I, I've met so many incredible people like um, uh, Kim Jordan uh, uh, and her husband, uh, her ex-husband, the founders of uh, New Belgium Brewing Company. And I didn't know anything until like an hour into that conversation. We're driving from Philadelphia, we get stuck in traffic. And I'm like, all right, what do you guys do? So we're just talking and doing this organic conversation. And afterwards, I missed it because I'm 19 years old and I missed like the name of their brand and stuff like that. And I wasn't and I, I, I get home and my buddy's like, well, who'd you drive around today? I'm like. I don't know. People with the craziest and dumbest like company name it was called Flat Tire. You know, I don't. I'd never even heard it before. It ends up. So fast forward, like I'm in the, I'm in the with them, and I'm in the, I'm 19 years old, and this is happening. Fast forward to my career. My one of my career defining moments is New Belgium Brewing Company is interested in coming to Pennsylvania, and I'm I'm the vice president of that distributor. And my job is to build the distribution network for Pennsylvania to present to New Belgium. And I'm in Colorado and I, I pull Kim aside. Uh -huh. Here it goes two places. And I am gonna I am gonna competitively nod and I hope that they take this as a good thing. Me and and the same company, Wrigley Beverage, I don't work for them at all. I work for another company. I'm competing against that 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 owner and that 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 company. I had a completely different presentation than them because mine was very much different. I won't go through the detail of what mine was different. We were different. And we presented two different philosophies. And full circle of life, guess who went home with that contract? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I say, I, 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 uh, I, it was a very defining moment in my life. Right. One, being the youngest person in the room with an entire state of executives and owners of, of these wholesalers that were, we were all in the same room at the same time. And um, and I had been presenting and stuff like that. I was I was not yet thirty, I don't think, or just past thirty. And um, also at the same time, I think uh, oh, I'll, I will say this: I won't say who it was, but someone that was supposed to be there that had all of the the documents, all of the handouts, because we had these books that were made because we've been working for weeks. They were with them on the private jet. Okay, so everybody else, they were on the private jet, and and they're like, oh, we're on our way, and it's like four a.m., and I'm like, okay, guys, let's go. You guys have the stuff. And we're in, uh, where are we at? Fort Collins, Colorado, which is not a huge metropolis. It's around 6 a.m. or whatever, the meeting's at 11 or sometime. All of a sudden, the, the plane doesn't, the battery's not working on the plane. And and they, I get a text that says, hey, listen, uh, like, we're not going to be there. Like, it, it's not working. And I'm like, you guys have the, like, we, we did this so analog. Like, you have, you're physically holding what we need. And um, eventually he's like, all right, let's figure something out. I, I went through and I sat back at my desk and they're sitting at the tarmac at some private jet place somewhere. And I'm sitting at my, I'm sitting at the, at the uh, hotel across the street from the brewery. Cause I went in advance on, and I, I flew Southwest. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. So I, at 6 AM I'm redoing set, uh, three, four months of presentations. And I redid it all. I then get in a rental car, drive an hour out of Fort Collins to find a Staples at 8 AM that's willing to <laughs> and remake these things. And the lady that worked there was so not excited to see me standing outside. And I sat there on the curb until they came over and turned the, turned the key. And I came in with my flash drive and I was like, I need 300 copies of this. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I'll help you. I go in the back behind Staples. We're printing, we're stamping, we're doing, and I, and, and then all of a sudden we did the boxes and we get back and I drive back to the brewery. And and they, uh, everything worked out. They're standing there, and I, I am sweating. And I come into the room, and everybody's like waiting for me. And I'm handing out all the presentations, and then all of a sudden they come in with the box at the same, like maybe five minutes difference. And I and what at the same, I look, I go back to like everybody was like, oh, that was nuts. There's three, four hours, or five hours, or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? It was nuts. But you know what? Looking back. That's the same thing I did during COVID when my contracts all died. That's the same thing I did when I got laid off and I had two kids. And I, it's the same thing I did when, you know, I, a million reasons. It's the same thing when I did dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to get at is you really spend a lot of time focusing on the distilled intent of people. And I really appreciate what you brought up about understanding that there's a lot more to people than what's on their resume. And right. the intent of this podcast is the same thing because all I do is look at your resume before we go online. We don't talk. 
and I get to know you and I get to know things about you and you get to know things about me that we wouldn't normally see in that resume. And I think one of the things that I find with technology is the bad part is we've given, we've taken the human connection out of the job application process due to volume and demand. Let me, let me just say this. I, I understand why we did it, but there is a lot of people that are not getting the jobs that they should get because they have the wrong word on their on their resume or they have the a title that's bigger and they just got laid off and it doesn't matter what job it is because they're they need to pay the bills and yeah it's talk, true. and and i guess the entire I have students that are applying for jobs right now they're graduating in may and uh uh and yeah i i mean this the 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 tips that are they are being told to get to get past the optical character readers and the new ai systems that are i mean oh my goodness oh oh jeez i couldn't there was a time there was a time this fall that um i had i had uh for a year i had a business that uh, uh was uh overstock i was buying overstock from target and selling discount warehouse type thing so i had the warehouse all that I had to close it down um could tell that story but was basically the long story short is we left no money and uh so and this is this in the past this is this fall and uh, and i had nothing and i was applying to jobs at gas stations and chains and things like that just to get something to keep things going so that i could get the other until the other jobs came because it's q4 and you know i'm, I'm an executive and i'm an owner of a business and i'm trying to find fill a gap of an idea that didn't work and i needed something in between we've all been there i could not get an in-between job if i walked in the door with a hundred dollar bill taped to my forehead i was i was declined and not just not just like you know ghosted straight up like no you're not coming to this job and and that for me it was so disheartening because i'm like man i have a hell of a resume and i just need something for a little bit of time to bridge the q4 but damn i'm just i think about it all the time I'm like we just we as this is and we can't turn we can't go back we can't turn that back no but i think you know like one of the things that that uh you know, I've certainly in conversations with with colleagues. You know, certainly with with as I as I <laughs> with with my my children. Um, you know, one of the things that that I think is is key in this is is something that uh, maybe it's natural uh, for a learning person. I I, I don't know because that's who I am. Um, my number two strength, uh, if you're a strength finders person, mm -hmm. is is learning. But is is the curiosity and 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 uh, what I was fascinated when when you reached out, Nate, was was you were you were like we're just going to take like you know we're sitting at a bar having a beer and, and talking to, you know talking to each other, and I love that because to me it automatically said here's somebody who's already curious, they just want to talk and ask questions and then share, and I think that 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 you know getting past those those tools um certainly are barriers and one of the coaching moments i had recently was you know let's let's learn how to use linkedin to find out you know who who's a hiring manager and who might be somebody you know and and how do you create that connection so that you can have more of a conversation with somebody and i think that that you know as i look past you know my own background my my time and and what i'm doing now in my consulting space is is the is the gift of being able to have those conversations to really become you know i call myself a curious learner because you know it's it's always having that you know it doesn't matter what the industry is it doesn't matter what the vertical is it's you know trying to focus on what helps you better in it, whether it's it's performance whether it's life whether it's just you know soul and spirit you know let's tell me and and i want to know and i think that what you're describing here was just that idea that you know having the moment to 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 reflect on someone's thoughts to share that moment of, of shared experience you know yeah a couple of things you were talking about oh i'm in your choir been there, so I'm I'm in there. <laughs> yeah Shoes may be a little different size, but I've walked in those shoes, you know, so, you know, get, being able to, to have that opportunity to kind of dive into, you know, this kind of cultural community and, and, and ask questions, I think is, is, is really kind of important. Well, Bill, thank you so much for your time today. I, um, I cannot, I cannot express it enough how much I appreciate you taking the time. I, I firmly believe that time is the most valuable thing that we have. And the fact that you gifted that to me today, I mean that. 
Um, I cannot express how much I mean that it means. Um, with that said, also, I don't think this is the last conversation you and I are going to have. So I'm going to confidently say that. So I, I look forward to this relationship. Uh, I will not hound you. I will not bother you. But if you ever, the door is always open. If you ever want to have a conversation on or off camera, to be honest with you, I really, um, well, I'll reach out to you via email and let you know some of the things that go on afterwards. But um, just letting you know, as some of the other guests, there's a, uh, it's called the free mind flow. And basically it's everything you're talking about. It's the community. It's the, it's the re re referral network. It's all those things of just the guests of the podcast. So that's all it is that's in the community. There's nobody else can buy into it. There's no cost to be in it. It's just you're on the, you're a guest in the podcast and let's all make some magic to, have, to have happen together. So I will uh, send you that introduction to that and we'll connect over there. Any last um, connections as far as, uh, or ways that people can reach out if they wanna reach out to you or anything exciting about your businesses or anything you wanna touch on before we close out? Always, again, I, I, I welcome any conversations. And Nate, I look forward to meeting others that that have, uh, you know, had the ability to have the conversation with you. I'm sure um, a chance to listen and learn would be a, a, a wonderful gift. So I thank you in advance for that. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you can reach out to me, bill at williamjryan.com. Uh, and my website is williamjryan.com. And uh, take a look, and if you see something that's interesting or you have a question, I, I would welcome a conversation. Awesome. Bill, thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you again. Thank you. You too. Take care. If you have a story to share or you know someone with an inspiring journey, the Free Mind Podcast wants to hear from you. Submit your story or nominate somebody to be our next guest. Check out our website, thefreemindpodcast.com, and be a part of the conversation that truly matters.